In this video, I'll be explaining to you how to draw Lewis structures for covalent bonds. So, Lewis structures. So, in a covalent bond, there is sharing between electrons, meaning that will represent when we have two, let's say, carbon and carbon, a dash between them, means that they are sharing two electrons. So, again, a dash is simply one electron from each of the atoms being connected. So, a dash represents two electrons. Drawing structures for covalent bonds is a little bit trickier than for ionic bonds, but it's not hard. You just need a little bit of practice. A very important method you have to, or or factor you have to take into account when you're going to draw a, a covalent bond compound is formal charge. The formal charge will simply tell you the charge of each of the atoms. So, and it will be minus one, zero, one. Those are the acceptable formal charges. If you have a plus two, that's wrong. If you have a negative two, that's wrong. Or something more, like a plus three, negative three, and so on. So. The formal charge you will always want to have it as negative one, zero, or one. But zero is the is like the most stable, the one the atom prefers. The way you calculate the formal charge is simply a formula. So it will be the number of valence electrons minus the number of unbonded electrons, so free electrons, minus half the number of bonded electrons. So let's calculate the, form the formal charge of some atoms. So let's say we have this. We have a carbon that has one hydrogen to the side it has one oxygen here and one double bonded oxygen a double bonded oxygen a double bond is simply two bonds so it has four four electrons there so we want to calculate the formal charge of each of the atoms let's start with the actually I forgot to those are the electrons. So this is the same as of the ionic bonds. You still have to represent the electrons as dots. And well, those are so those are free electrons the oxygen molecules have. And hydrogen has none because hydrogen has only one valence electron. So it only has one electron available for bonding. And that electron is right here, making a bond with the carbon. Carbon has four electrons, so there's one here, one here, and two here. And oxygen has six electrons available for bonding, and we'll get a full octet. So you'll you'll write oxygen with eight electrons pretty much all the time. So if there's only one bond, it will have six free electrons. If there is two bonds, it will have four free electrons. Now let's get the formal charge for each element. So for this oxygen, this one, formal charge would be, first it's the number of valence electrons, so that's 6, minus the number of unbonded electrons, so that's 6 too, minus half the number of bonded electrons, and because there is one bond right here, that means there is two electrons there, so it will be here 
So the formal charge is 6 minus 6 is 0, minus 1. So this, that oxygen has a, a formal charge of negative 1. Now let's get this, let's get this double bonded oxygen. The valence electrons will be the same, 6. It has 4 free electrons. And four bonded electrons because it's a double bond. So that means that the formal charge is six minus four two minus minus two. That's zero. So that's good. Let's get the form the formal charge of hydrogen. That will be it has one valence electron, zero free electrons, and two bonded electrons because of the bond with carbon so that means the formal charge of the hydrogen will be zero and then the formal charge of the carbon right here is the it has four valence electrons minus zero free electrons minus half bonded electrons that's it has eight it has four bonds so that means eight electrons so it'll be minus four so the formal charge of carbon is zero so when you add all the formal charges up that means the whole molecule has a formal charge of negative one and that is acceptable so oxygen here double bond hydrogen one two one two and you just represent that with brackets and negative one. So a good table to have in mind is the formal charges for for how an atom for how each atom is bonded. So carbon when the formal charge is zero will have four bonds. Hydrogen will have one bond oxygen will have two bonds and two free electrons um, nitrogen will have three bonds and two free electrons the halogens like Fluorine, fluorine, bromine, and iodine will only have one bond, so it's like hi like hydrogen, but they have six free electrons around them. And then, if the formal charge is negative, that means they will have extra free electrons. So carbon will have two free electrons, making the molecule negative. Hydrogen will have two free electrons. Oxygen will have one bond and six free electrons nitrogen will have two bonds and four free electrons and it's the opposite for when the charge is positive that means they will have more bonds than what they usually like when the formal charge is zero so like oxygen is the best example oxygen would have three bonds and only two free electrons. So it's a deficiency of electrons making the charge positive. Nitrogen would have four bonds. Hydrogen would have none. And carbon is represented with a positive. So the formal charge matters because you want to have the lowest formal charge possible possible for that structure. So if you have something like O2, that is a covalent bond between them. So you'll have O and O. You make a line. That's the first bond. And because the formal charge for oxygen when it's double bond is zero, you want to have a double bond between both of them. So that the formal charge of the whole thing is zero and you represent the free uh, 
the free electrons. It is better to have two zeros than a positive and a negative. So if you had oxygen like this, and then this one like this, here we have a negative one and a positive one. So then this two will go here to form a bond. This and this. Now let's do something a little bit more complicated. NO2 plus. So that's giving you the the former the total former charge of the of the atom. So nitrogen will be the center atom, and we have two oxygens. So, we said that the formal charge for nitrogen, the, when, when the formal charge for nitrogen is zero, it has three bonds and a pair of free electrons. So you want to have the, at least three bonds. So one of them will be a double bond here. And that gives us a formal charge of zero for this, formal charge of zero for this, and a formal charge of negative one for this. And the the total form the total formal charge of this would be a negative one, but we it says here that we want a positive one. So you can have a single bonded oxygen. If you add a double bond, then the formal charge of this oxygen will become zero. And the formal charge of the nitrogen will change too, so it will become a positive one. Because it is electron deficient now. Before it had these two free electrons, and now it has none because it has four bonds. So finally, you just write it in brackets and put a positive. And that's how you draw the structure of a covalent bonded molecule or compound. If you found the video helpful, like it and share it with your friends.